Hi, everybody. I'm still John. Um, I'm going to talk to you about this practical MDO course, which you've heard about. I'm generally concerned that you've already heard too much about it, and you might have expectations. But let's talk about what it is and what this means. So first, I will play a short intro. It has no sound because I want you to go to the YouTube and to listen to the sound yourself. <laughs> I want you to get excited about learning MDO. So if you're in this room, you're probably here for some reason. Oh, no. Okay. Um, because you're probably using MDO or you're interested in it. And I want you to know that you should be interested in learning it because it's a very powerful tool. And as we know, it's not easy to harness this power. And so the whole idea here is to take some of the, the lessons learned, some of the best practices, give these to people, give them the power to do what they want to do for systems engineering, for MDO, and allow them to do this. Um, I was very fortunate to get a PhD from the MDO lab in Michigan. That took four, four and a half years of my life. Not everybody has that kind of time to devote to learning MDO. I want people to be able to do that uh, a little bit faster, a little bit easier. Maybe they don't need to go as deep into certain topics. Maybe they just want a, a quick view of the breadth of using MDO. It's a, it's a very nonlinear process. There are some blocks here that are connected together. It takes a lot of uh, understanding physics. It takes optimizing. Uh, different problems just to understand what you don't know first. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth between different parts here. I just wanted to kind of illustrate that, yeah, it's not easy. There, there's not a linear path. There's not, you can sit down and learn steps one, two, and three, four, five, and six, and then you're done. That'd be really nice, but, but you can't do that. I like the idea uh, of saying that OpenMDO, you heard about this arms race. It makes the hard easy and the impossible hard, right? And so there's all these different ways of coupling multiple different fidelities multiple different disciplines, and we want to be able to do that and actually design and optimize these systems. Uh, it's challenging to, to set them up well in a way that, that's understandable. All that being said, this practical MDO course is focused on helping you get an understanding of using models, doing systems engineering, and actually performing MDO at whatever levels of fidelity or whatever numbers of disciplines you want to include. So let's talk about what this is. Maybe I can help uh, some of these expectations or or some of your understanding. This is not an OpenMDO course. I want to be very, very clear about that. You can think of OpenMDO as a tool that, that we're using to help you understand parts of MDO. The whole idea here is that if we have like this, this kind of spectrum between the theoretical, these papers, or, or the uh, engineering design optimization book, that's on the theoretical side. The implementation side is maybe the OpenMDO docs. That's showing you the API. That's showing you the code that you want to actually call to do some of these analyses and optimizations. The idea of this course is to, is to bridge this gap, is to be somewhere in between. Maybe some lessons are very theoretical, maybe some other ones are very implementation focused. But the whole goal is to say, hey, there are some really neat things that aren't necessarily novel. We can't publish them in a, in a journal article. Or maybe they don't belong only in the OpenMDO docs. Maybe they need to be more general and, and you can use them for other things besides OpenMDO. This course is supposed to capture those ideas. And it captures them in the form of, of lectures. Um, I say words to you. I have, I have animations. It's kind of exciting. But it's, it's more than just lectures. It's, it's more than just these YouTube videos. The other idea is that we have a Python notebooks that you can work through at the same time that, that you watch a lecture and then you actually go and look at the code. You have more words to go along with it, some links to other resources, to some of the theoretical papers behind some of these ideas. The, the goal is to say, okay, maybe if you prefer to not watch a video, you can just sit down and do some of these notebooks. And, and then the last one, which I hope flashes up soon, is the links to different resources. I mentioned this in the notebooks, uh, but the whole idea here is if you really want to get in the nuts and bolts of, of some of the theory, maybe you really need to care about some of this, you, you can do that. You can, you can click through to some of the papers, to some of the documentation, and, uh, and check that out in more detail. Let's talk about your prerequisite knowledge, what you need to know. I, I'm not going to teach you Python. I can't do that. I can't teach you calculus. Uh, I assume that you come in with some knowledge of Python, you know, calculus, a, a bit of numerical methods, hopefully some open MDO knowledge. Um, uh, again, I can't teach you, you know, all the documentation, the API stuff. I'm going to be the course that's on top of all these other things. And this will allow you to do the next generation systems engineering project. Isn't that exciting? Don't you want to do that? But it assumes that you have some prerequisite knowledge. Again, I'm not going to tell you what a derivative is, what, what an integral is, things like that. So in addition to having some textbook knowledge about like, you know, an undergraduate level, understanding of calculus, maybe numerical methods, I, I want you to have a, a quasi-working knowledge 
of OpenMDO. If you don't, I'll link you to the API docs. I'll, I'll link you to some examples in OpenMDO to help you get that, that working knowledge. Uh, but again, this course is not necessarily about that. Throughout the course, I talk about three main subtopics. Um, the intersection of this is, is MDAO. Uh, this graphic comes from a previous blog post on the OpenMDO website, but this is not necessarily where it or originated. These three topics are optimization, modeling, and differentiation. You need to know how to model your actual physical system. If you're doing gradient-based design optimization, uh, you need differentiation. You need the gradients as well. And if you're, if you're trying to actually change the design of these systems to understand what kind of gains you can get from new technologies, you need to be able to optimize them. So throughout the course, I often reference, hey, this is focus. This is a focus from one of these subtopics. This is something that's really in this or it's at the intersection of these two things. I want to kind of anchor the, the different lessons and the different lectures and, and let you know what we're really focusing on today. So there are three main topics. There, the course is kind of divided up into these three main topics. But I can't stress enough, the intersection of them is the interesting part. That's the, that's the cool part. So it's never just one topic that we're really focused on. It's really the, the combination of all of them. The videos are very uh, forward-facing is what people talk about. Uh, so let's talk about them. Each one's about five to 15 minutes. That's the goal. Some might be a little bit longer. Some might be a little bit shorter. Um, my attention span can't handle much longer than, than 15 minutes, right? So it, it's much easier to watch a few episodes on Netflix than one movie. Anyway, the idea is that we have animations. We have some, some graphs, some, some math theory. I, I walk you through that. Um, I definitely say words. Recently, I've been trying you know, to add video as well for some hand gestures. Maybe that helps. And the idea here is that these lessons will introduce some ideas. They won't tell you everything about them. But if something piques your interest, then you can go into the notebook and click around and see what's going on. Here's some of the notebooks I, I, I mentioned. We have a lot more detail. There's links to references and docs. And the neat part about notebooks is that we have the actual OpenMDO code to allow you to run through some of these examples. You can tweak them yourself. You can see what's going on there, see how it converges if you, if you change something. That's pretty cool. Also, there are some exercise type notebooks, maybe some homework problems is how you can think about them. I'll, I'll showcase those in a little bit as well. Uh, the idea there is that you can look at somebody doing something, but until you actually do it yourself, it's very challenging to learn. I learn by doing. Um, it, it's helpful to actually kind of struggle a little bit. To, to help you if you're struggling too much, there are some hints, and uh, there are also solutions. You can kind of check uh, maybe what I would suggest doing. These lessons don't just exist in a blob. They're not just points. I, I want to organize them in some way. But the issue, like I mentioned before, is that there's not a linear path through all of these lessons. So I have collections of guided lessons. Let's say that you're, you're starting with no knowledge but a huge capacity for learning and you want to learn how to do optimization. There, there's a zero to optimization in 10 steps idea. You talk about modeling, how to make your model, how to get derivatives, how to do optimization, how to debug your optimization. And all that it is is, is a collection of discrete lessons. And, and so it's kind of just a, a more intelligent cur curated set of lessons that I'd suggest you go through if you want to do that. There are some other groups of guided lessons that I'm still working on, uh, but the idea is that if you just care about a, a certain subset of the knowledge of this course, which lessons do you need to focus on? I, I, wanna, I wanna make that clear for you. Other notes, I, I'm proud of some of these things. So there are subtitles and, and transcripts for each lecture. Um, if English is not your first language, I, I want you to be able to translate it more easily. If you remember me saying something weird and you're like, I don't know what lesson that was at. You can search for it on, on the webpage I'm gonna show you. There's a little search bar and you can search for the words that I said. Maybe that's helpful. Uh, additionally, all of the lessons are kind of cross-linked uh, to each other and to the OpenMDO website and to like papers and things. I can't stress enough that if something already exists that's a good resource for this, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna re-record it. I'm not gonna write a new thing about it. I, I'm just gonna kind of point you in that direction and help you get there. So that being said, let's do a live walkthrough. Let's see how this goes, right? This is always thrilling. Cool, here's a web browser. Here, here's the landing page for this collection of lessons and things. I say hello and welcome. I explain what's going on. We have this fantastic Venn diagram. I scroll down, there's an intro lecture. Heck, it might say almost what I just said just now, but <laughs> you can watch it on your own time. Uh, it, it's a little bit different. There's some main points, just some bullet points, things like that. Okay, but let's talk about the meat of the course. On the left-hand side here, we have like a, like a tree of what we're checking out. We have guided lessons. If I click on zero to optimization in 10 steps, it's got these 10 steps. It's got links to the lessons about them. 
Now you might say, John, some of these are not linked yet. I'm working on it. We're, we're working through some of these lessons still. This is absolutely a work in progress. But let's take a look at some lessons, right? So we have model construction. Maybe that's what you care about first. Somebody said you should use the N2 diagram and you said, I don't know what that is. I don't know how to make it. You can learn here. You can click on the video. That's my face. I don't know why I look so serious in this one. <laughs> it's a very serious topic, these N squared diagrams, but you can check them out. Then I also show you know, some tips. I have some links here. Um, it's more than just the videos. I can't stress that enough. So you can click through any one of these, every single one of these. Um, I don't know, I put a lot of thought into this. I, I seek feedback from, from the, the NASA team. Uh, some people say nice things. Other people say constructive things. They say things to help them get better. Um, thank you, everybody, for your support. Uh, there, there's lots of work that goes into this, is what I'm trying to say. We, we hear from people who are power users, like Justin, who say, everybody knows that. You don't need to, to make a lesson about that. And other people who say, I don't know what that is. Can you please make a lesson about that? So there's a huge spectrum of people who have been providing input for this. Uh, it's really fun. What am I most proud of? I'm most proud of, I think, the ability to talk about this and to share this with people who may not, again, have had time to have a formal education about this. I want to make MDO accessible to many, many more people. I think this is just one of many tools to help make that happen. The fact that NASA is funding this and putting it out in the open source domain, it, it's fantastic. So, I want you to use this. I want you to recommend this to other people. If you have suggestions for how to make it better, you say, actually, this isn't relevant for me yet. I'd much rather see this. Tell me. Tell us. We'd, we'd love to hear it. We'd love to make this a, a one-stop shop for all sorts of things related to MDO. The second most proud I am is to work my cat into these videos. Um, this has an astronomical number of views and likes compared to the other ones. Um, <laughs> He's got 17 likes. His name's Smokey Kitty. Um, when it's just me, it's got like three likes. I don't know what that's about. Uh, I, told my, I told my partner, Kate, she said, you know, maybe just get rid of you. Maybe just have the cat in the thumbnails. Um, so we'll have to workshop that. We'll see what happens. And uh, this isn't even my best cat. I have a better cat. He's not been featured yet. So, so there's plenty, plenty to share here. There are some more other things. There are some exercises. I should, I should talk about the exercises. Um, Debugging solvers, it's terrible. You hate doing it. Let's talk about learning how to do it better. Level advanced, okay, we got some topics here, some links. Let's say we're trying to debug a Newton solver. We don't know why it's not converging. We want to figure it out. There's already a solver debugging checklist in the OpenMDO docs. Um, well, that's a link to my own other lesson. Anyway, here are some hints. Let's say that you're stuck. Oh, there's a, there's a small hint here. It's gonna tell you something. There's a big hint as well if you need some extra help. So again, I want you to look through this. I don't want you to struggle in general, but I want you to struggle if it helps you learn. But there's also hints. If you scroll all the way down, after you've, used, you, you've taken a look at it, you've tried it, you can click on the solutions page. You can check it out. Um, it's pretty neat. I only have a few exercises so far, but there are gonna be many more. Um, it sounds like Eric already has a, a normal shock one. I'm gonna steal it. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna put it in here. It'll be great. Video transcripts, right? And so this is just what I mentioned before. There, there's text here. Also for the actual YouTube videos, if you click through to them, it, it's got the text popping up on the screen as the videos are playing. I, I hope that helps you. Um, sometimes I mumble. Sometimes it's nice to see the actual text, right? So this was the live view of the website. It's, it's, I think it's fun. Try searching through some terms. See if something's there. If something's not there, tell me that you want to see a, a lesson about it. Let's chat. Thank you for your time. What questions do you have? Thanks so much, Sean. Yeah. OK, so, so let's see a live demonstration. Type in the word cat, and I, I expect to see that. You no, know, I don't know if cat's going to. Oh, it does. There you go. OK. I say something's the cat's pajamas. I say it's the cat's meow. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. So the search function works for the most important items. Yes. Thank Absolutely. You. We, have a, the, we have five for 10 minutes. The cat's questions. name is Smokey, by the way. It's a very creative name. Thank it's you. Not, not good cat? Not, not good cat. Banjo cat. Pete is number one cat. He's the best <laughs> cat. Um, he'll be featured later, trust me. Uh, thank you. So I, I'm very new to this area, and it's, your video has been very helpful. Oh, good. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Uh, so one, one specific topic I was curious about is uh, like different architectures uh, in MDO. Sure. So do you plan to maybe uh, introduce, go over some of the well-known architectures and how they're implemented in OpenMDO? Oh, dear. Absolutely. Um, You're talking about like the distributed architectures like Bliss or? Uh, it could be distributed, but even within monolithic, okay. um, the, like the, the IDF, MDF, IDF, MDF, yeah. Okay. Those. Yeah, I, I think that will be something that I go into. I 
can't stress enough, there are so many topics that I just haven't you know, covered yet because of time. Um, the toughness about that is drawing the line between where is this already like covered in a paper? Where is the theory already kind of discussed in detail? And what can I say that's new for this? What can I make more understandable about it? So yes, I plan to cover architectures. Will I go into the extreme details about MDF versus IDF or other things like that? Maybe not, but like when to use what is definitely something I'd want to cover here. You know, yeah. what does it mean for somebody? I would actually push back on that and agree with John, but say whether you know if it's MDF or IDF is probably, from a practical standpoint, not important. What's important is whether you have some sense of whether you as a user should create an equality constraint or a equality um, residual that's converged by a solver and how to make that decision, uh, which I think is a much more subtle but practical topic. So I think we'll cover that and maybe link to like the great survey article that, you know, Professor Martins wrote on, on how to look at those different architectures. But yeah, I, these courses are designed to be, well, I don't know, you, so you can tell us, like if you think that IDF versus MDF is a really important practical need that the community needs to hear, then we can think about it. But that wasn't, at least in, when I laid out the, the tasks, it wasn't, that topic wasn't what we would talk about. It would be more like, how do you know if you should add a single equality constraint or a single solver balance? Yeah. I guess from my perspective, like I want to solve this problem. I don't know which architecture to try first or uh, the test. Um, and another aspect is that, so it'd be nice to have uh, one problem, example problem, but implement it different ways mm. in OpenMDAO and see the sure. differences in the performance yourself. That, that'd, be, that'd be nice to have. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely a thing we can look at um, and, and we'll do. Yes. Thank you. Other questions? Everybody wants lunch. Yeah, it's fair. Oh, no, no, it's all right. We got some time. See, now I'm the one that delays lunch, so. <laughs> um, do you talk at all about dealing with models that don't necessarily have, are, like, that aren't feasible everywhere, that have areas of the domain that just don't evaluate? Mm, yes, absolutely. Um, how to talk, there are so many things that could be said about that. Uh, yeah, I, I think one thing is how to do optimization there and what that means, how to kind of like foolproof it. And what I will focus on in, in this lesson is kind of about how to handle that, how to send like an analysis error flag or something like that that will allow you to persevere through those issues and go past there. In a few places I also say, hey, you should start from a feasible point in the design space mm -hmm. if you can. But if you don't know where that is, then you have to figure out what to do with that. I, th I think you're asking specifically about like large areas of non-validity though, not like some yeah. random point in the space that doesn't converge, but like there's an island of, of badness in your model. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably a whole nother lecture. <laughs> yeah, that's a mess. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I even have a, I mean, you just add constraints to stay away from it. I'm not, I'm not sure I have a good answer for how to deal with that. Uh, we, we've used uh, the analysis error flag in the past to basically tell the optimizer that it has to yeah, search that you, point again. But if, it, if there's like a whole island where that, then the optimizer will just die if it gets like three or four of those in the row. So, yeah. yeah. Um, it's an interesting topic. We can talk more about it at dinner. Um, yeah. that, I, would, I would label that as like an advanced topic, although maybe problematically, that's one of those advanced topics that maybe practical, realistic problems have to deal with. Um, so... Yeah, I'd say there's two kinds of failure. There's like the random failure where like this point fails, but then this point like a millimeter to the left works fine. Um, those we have ways to deal with and can put into a lesson, but like an island of in, well, there's an island of infeasibility where you can get a valid answer, but you know it's infeasible. That, that we could tell you how to deal with. But if you have like an area where you just have to stay out of it because the solver cannot give you an answer there, that's, that's nasty. I would say parameterize your problem to stay out of that area. <laughs> Well, that at least, if, if you have an island that's feasible and everything else is not, you can stay inside that island, but yeah. Well, fair enough, but yeah. So, but yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a not easy topic, and if it's an important one, if enough people seem to think it's one they're running into, then maybe it's something we'll have to generate some lessons for. Although I, I think in that one area, we'd be doing a little bit more research than having the answer ready for you. Any other last questions, or any questions from anyone online? Okay, with that, John, thank you very much. Cool. Thanks.